At the top of the show, we started with a bang. So I'm on my way to find out how did we do that. Top gear, eh? I thought. Luxurious locations, glamorous girls and expensive cars. Instead, I'm on my way to Suffolk. Don't ask. <laughs> To be spit-roasted like the overstuffed Mancunian I am. Glamour, glamour, glamour. Top gear, eh? Can I, uh, can I get out now? My breakfast, uh... Yes, the rolling flatness of Suffolk, home to one of the country's leading exponents of cunning stunts. From 007 to 999, if you want a car to roll or leap in the air, then call Bickers Action. Well, I used to be a motorbike racer and, uh, had a bit of luck at that. A bit of luck? I've seen your trophy cabinet. <laughs> Yes, well, that sort of took from 16 till sort of 36. I suppose the best thing really is the two European Championships um, and seven, six or seven British Championships and a few BBC trophies and things. The Winter Grandstand Trophy Series keeps Britain's top scramblers in trim for the Summer World Championship races. And does it keep them in trim? Hawkstone Hill here caused chaos, defeating nearly all of them. But not the bold and fearless ex-European champion Dave Vickers in brilliant winning form. Imagine not knowing how many British championships you'd won. Any road up at the end of his career, Dave utilised his riding skills and moved into television and film. I didn't do much stunt riding. I'd done a little bit. I'd done Escape to Athenia and jumped the motorbike and sidecar over a donkey and cart and then over a big river. But I could see there was an opening for just an ordinary sort of mechanic type schema, you know, and uh, I sort of done, mended a few things there. I didn't do that to mend things, but uh, they just snowballed to where we are today. Vickers is a family firm, and head of the car killing team is Dave's son, Paul. Well, it's sort of a family business which, which has evolved over time. Um, I've sort of been born and bred motorbikes and cars, and uh, through my work racing background, we've gone into the film work, and uh, that's what we sort of uh, like to spend our time doing now. The company's ability to achieve the impossible with cars has seen them work on some famous adverts. The Volvo commercial, that was quite an interesting exercise really, I mean, uh, uh, it was very last minute and uh, we just got the call, we got to make this Volvo car go over a steel bridge at sort of uh, 200 foot off the ground uh, with no danger to the stunt driver, so we actually built like a roller coaster affair which actually hooked the car into the metal framework of the bridge. Now, normally, with any kind of a stunt, you only get one bite at the cherry. You measure twice and cut once, as my dad used to say. Now, today, the boys at Vickers have said, I can have a go. So behind me, there's one Rover 800 that's had one uncareful owner. Watch this. Three, two, one. The onboard gas canister fires a metal piston out under the car, which then tips the car over. This device can be used while the car is moving with a driver. After the car has rolled and the smoke cleared, you can see the ram that's been fired out of the piston. Have a look at the effect in this Cavalier ad. Apart from destroying cars, Vickers' core activity is providing film and television makers with what's known as tracking vehicles. These are specially adapted pickups and low loaders that have had camera platforms fitted to the rear. Now, in the main, the company used gas guzzling Chevys and Fords with Neanderthal cast iron six and seven litre engines. Ideal for this sort of work. However, this is a little bit special. This is a little different. This kind of improvisation would make the cast of Whose Line Is It Anyway look like a bunch of scripted actors. It's Bicker's piece of resistance. Can you tell what it is yet? Underneath all of this scaffolding and metal plates is, wait for it, a TVR Tasman. This futuristic post-apocalypse type of battle vehicle has a three and a half litre engine which develops 200 brake horsepower. And even when fully loaded with a film crew and all of their equipment, We'll still go from 0 to 60 in 6 seconds and a top whack of weight for it, 156 miles an hour. It was specially developed for high-speed tracking work for the 007 movie Tomorrow Never Dies. What with virtual reality and computer animation these days, you at home would be forgiven if you didn't actually believe all you saw in film and television these days. Well, there are some who say I'm actually a girl called Brenda who's quite feminine from Brighton. There's also some who say no Lebanon isn't that talented. I'll tell you what is true though, I'm not actually riding this bike. The bike is towed 
again using a huge American pickup. With its steering locked off, a series of archaic but effective hydraulics control the lateral movement of the bike. The experienced Mr Bickers controls the bike's roll with the wheel in the back of the truck. You can even do this, but don't try this at home. So, back to our stunning Sierra stunt. Paul Bickers talks us through the process. You have to strip out the engine of the car, uh, fuel tank, all the running gear, um, to take away the fire risk and take away as much weight as we can so the car actually lift up nice and high. Sierra lovers, look away now. The cannon itself is, is basically two parts. We have a piece on the ground which actually fires the gas into another receptacle within the car, and uh, the force of gas actually physically lifts the vehicle off off the, the piston itself. Well, nitrogen is an inert gas um, for the pressures that we use. If we use a compressed air, um, there's a likelihood of an explosion with high pressure with any sort of oil or oily substance there. So it's just a safety precaution, really. The pressure we used was about 1,000 pounds per square inch. I mean, as you can imagine, that's quite a force. And uh, you can see that with the lift we got as well. To give our scene some background, we decided to, well, dress the set a little. We had 13 cars delivered, creating our own little wreckers yard. It's always wise to take precautions, of course. We had a fire crew and paramedics on standby all day. Bickers do the engineering work, but for all of the explosions and pyrotechnics, they call in a licensed expert. Ever wondered what would happen to a boy who spent too much time with his junior chemistry set? Well, meet Dave Bomber Harris. We've got cortex wrapped around that, and that'll actually vaporise the can, spread the petrol in the car and shatter the windows. Right. So we'll have a flaming fireball that will then go with the car as it, as it flips over off Dave's nitrogen rig. Firstly, the huge gas reservoir is positioned and the firing mechanism tested. It's all hands to the pump as the piston and its heavy metal base is put in place. Then the car, complete with barrel, is lowered slowly onto the piston, taking great care not to damage the pristine bodywork. After a little more set dressing, the gas-filled ram is then charged with pressurised nitrogen, 1,000 pounds per square inch, remember, leaving the Sierra like a primed, unexploded bomb. Poised and very dangerous. So, here we are, two days of rigging and a cast of 20-odd. All we need now is Quentin. That'll be him. Tonight on Top Gear, we take no prisoners. The car... Right. Oh, this. Go. Crash, bang, wallop, what a picture. The two Daves congratulate each other while I realised that that was my dad's Sierra. And with Quentin off home, it's just down to me and the boys to clear up all this mess. All in a day's work, eh? Next week, the Lexus IS200. The Lexus that thinks it's a BMW 3 Series. And the Mitsubishi Evo, savage performance.